I know, I know what everyone's wondering. Has a piglet ever been born? All I wonder. With two snouts. Well, you can stop wondering because, in fact, it has happened. Farmer Ramon oh. Aguilar said he has never seen anything like it in all his years of raising pigs. This quote, mutant piglet. I don't like that New York Post. That's yeah, kind no, of no. That is very. That's negative. I, I'm, yeah. not a, I'm not for that. That is. Uh, let's do the work, New York Post. Let's yeah, do God. The work. God only births perfect beings. Um, well, it's, you know what? That's a piglet of a lesser god. Well, maybe. Um, this pig comes from a farm in the rural area of Ucacha in the Cordoba province Bukaki. of Argentina. Nice. Um, the farmer says, it's the first time I've ever seen a piglet like this. That's why I was so surprised. I've seen similar cases with cows, but never pigs. That's why it seems so rare to me. By the way, this article is doing like all these like pig puns. Oh, it's a post, of course. Aguilar said the little stinker, which doesn't seem to have a name, is breathing well through its four nostrils and appears oh. to be in good health. A veterinarian will check over the porker in the coming days. Um, By the way, these are so. not great puns, New York Post. I, come on, I do better. Not only are they not doing the work, they're not doing the pun work. Um, a piglet born last week with two snouts, two mouths, and two tongues is turning into quite the ham. I, Why? I'm not impressed. Not, I mean... <laughs> It's a pig of two minds. Uh, it could be raising the hoof. I don't know. Anything's better than what they were doing. Look at that motherfucker. Now, the yeah. question is, can he suckle, I guess, at this point, not eat from both mouths? I have, oh, there's still so, oh, well, it's two eyes, I guess. I just thought, you know how some pigs are truffle pigs? Yes. I wonder if this pig could be an incredible truffle sniffing pig because it has two snouts. This is going to be better than Babe. Yes. This is the kids' movie I would watch. Fuck Babe. But this yeah. one, yes. Uh, we will be taking um, votes and suggestions for the name of the pig. Please make them as punny as possible. Um, if I were to write a script, which I'm not going to, of it might not. start with the fact that, you know, of the, is it a litter? And it's a bunch of piglets. Yeah, I believe so. I think so. You know, he's he's the weirdo of the bunch, and no one wants to play with him. And you know, he doesn't get to do the other piggy things. <laughs> but then one day, he's playing off on his own, and he discover he discovers some truffles. And then the farmers are like, "Wow, good job, pig!" And all the other pigs are like, "Wow, you're cool now!" And then he just you know becomes a famous piggy celebrity. Okay, so now I know your work ethic. <laughs> and I know your lack of commitment on anything. So here's yeah. I'm going to start you off slowly. What you got right here is the makings of a children's book. And everyone knows mm. children's books are easy. Far more easy than writing a full script. Start with a children's book. I believe, was Babe a children's book first? I don't know. Um, but start with a children's book. Work from there. Wait, and Bill, you can do the illustrations. You know how to draw pigs. Oh, my. Well, but... As you know, I can only do pigs wow. doing one thing. Is they're, that... cu they're cuddling. They're they're <laughs> together in the in the barn for warmth. I'll bring it back to bros. They're wrestling. Nice. Now, unfortunately, we all know what happens when they start wrestling in bros, but we don't need to say that in the children's book. Yeah, they haven't seen the movie. Yeah, thank you. Or you can draw the opening scene and kind of play it as like the miracle of life. <laughs> this is how yeah. this double-snouted pig was born. Ruthless, hard pig fucking. And it's that. a butt baby. It didn't come. <laughs> the bullet, they, both the pigs were male pigs, and that was a miracle butt baby that they had. But oh, yeah, that's why it's all messed up with yeah. the two snouts and everything. It's against it God. Out of a butt. It's not messed up, Steve. If we're learning anything from this storyline, it is an incredible blessing. Well, again, Steve's not, Steve's not doing the work. Uniquely gifted yeah. pig. Thank you. Thank you. Differently snouted, you fucking <laughs> prick. Extra um, smelly, but in a good way. Uh, now I want to look at a truffle. Um, well, and then the, the real quick, the last thing, because I know our guests are probably getting sick of our yammery, but I have um, another That's Nature for you. Um, and this one also has two prominent things. Happily, they're breasts. Her name is uh, Salma Hayek. 
And I have a visceral, visceral reaction to this. And I, I'll give you the spoiler alert. It wasn't a good visceral reaction. Um, in a series of clips, Salma Hayek, currently revi revisiting her ro role in the latest Puss in Boots film, I guess. 56, and not from the post. Hollywood Life is mentioning her name, huh. by the way. And a gang of unseen friends noticed that some unexpected guests crashed producer Heather Perry's birthday party. Raccoons! This is a big one, Selma says with a smile before calling Amigo to the furry creature. Look, he's got the chicken. You gave him the chicken. In the following clip, she gets a closer shot of the raccoon eating away at some of the party's food. In the third, third slide of the gallery, Selma fearlessly hands a raccoon uh, a slice of the pizza. This is some great garden shit. I think what? we got a clip of one of one of the times she's feeding the raccoon. Why it's would just... you get that close? Oh, are you kidding me? All, the, like anyone who's from the Midwest is watching this and just thinking rabies, rabies, yeah. more rabies. This is this is the most revealing one. So fucking disgusting. They call them uh, garbage pandas for a reason. Let's see. He's going to pop oh. his fucking disease-riddled head out right now because he's got some free food going on here. I, I'm so against this in every way, shape, or form. Oh, Raccoons man. are absolute monsters. They will attack you just as soon as they will steal all of your garbage. Um, and by feeding them, you're just encouraging them. They're riddled but with disease. This is a great example of like how out of touch celebrities are. <laughs> Like, does she ever have to take out her own trash? She doesn't know about raccoons. Doesn't know. You're right. You know, she's just like, oh, uh, look at this beautiful little creature. She's never had to actively protect her home no. against raccoons. No. And if you got a small dog, good luck. They'll fuck it up just as much as a coyote will. Oh, God. Why Salma. is no friend around her being like... Could you not? Because this, you said it was a party for a friend. Is it not at her house? Like, it's not at her house. So now this she's poor person. Her, yeah. There's going to be a tribe of raccoons. Like this is the house with the good pizza. By the way, I love your raccoon impression. That was Thank fucking you. uncanny. Thank you. Um, look at that fucker. I want to shoot him. I, look, I, I like to be some animals. Everyone knows that. Okay. But if you see a raccoon, you shoot it, people. That's a public service you're doing right there. Yeah. Um, you know what else is a public service? What? Um, our guests. Oh, thank you, guys. That's nature. Oh, and look, we've got our two-headed uh, goat there, which is appropriate for your story. Uh, yeah, it's dead now. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a first-time guest alert. Mr. Max Marcus, comedian, screenwriter, podcast producer. Uh, all uh, mo Most of our staff, aside from Steve, because he's not doing the work, knows him via producing the wonderful Sabrina Piper's podcast, That's Hot. Um... Boy, she's had some Paris adventures lately. Max Marcus is in the building. Congratulations on, and wait for his reaction, your Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and Kevin Goatee's back, ladies. And yeah. He is a Hi, Joe. Grand Hi. Pooba of Gutting the Sacred Cow. Current episode just dropped, as the kids say. Uh, has guest co-host Dame Dildo Mouth Schultz. <laughs> That's and new, that's I heard you're dubbed by the uh, by the new Prince Charles that as your new royal moniker. By the way, you put a T in Schultz. That was the most offensive part. <laughs> I did that and, intentionally. <laughs> and Austin Marsdale, who I have to admit I did not agree with his his thoughts on Caddyshack, but he was very entertaining. Well, Race to Canis. That's Ray, it's Ray's uh, is uh, who was a guest uh, gutter, not Austin. Oh, I'm sorry, Jesus. Where I don't know what's going. Oh yeah, Austin. Uh, he's he's doing an upcoming one, right? No. Uh, okay. He, he does social media clips for me. Okay, got it. I don't know where I got Not that even clip. Close. <laughs> I I don't do my research. Uh, upcoming episodes also include Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, Shallow Hal. Oh, Joe, you like that one? And mm -hmm. wait for it, Hunger Games with our very own Joanne, formerly No Sachinsky, currently. Yes. Uh, right. And we'd have yeah. Joe back on. What's the name of? Well, and of course Jennifer Lawrence. We all know she hates her. So there you go. Mm -hmm. uh, we know where that's going to go. Now, um, Joe, this is about sports, but don't worry. It's mostly about food in kind of a mukbang way. Um, the refs had to briefly stop a Loyola College basketball game Wednesday night. 
because a wayward Uber Eats delivery person wandered onto the court. There's more to this story than we're aware of at this point. The unidentified man looked a little lost while carrying a bag of food from McDonald's. Actually, this isn't the one that's a Sophie's Choice, but I'll get to it. And searching for its receipt, re recipient. Eventually, the ref stopped playing to get things sorted out. I think we got a quick clip. Much to the astonishment of the play-by-play -play announcers. I really didn't see it. That's how crazy it is, said Duquesne's coach. I Duquesne, know. you Duquesne. fucking heathen. <laughs> I don't know anything about college sports. I just saw the video after the game. Uh, is it in Illinois, Duquesne? I could be wrong, but for some reason, uh, I think it is. It might be. I'm, I'm embarrassing myself. Um, our guys were dying laughing in the locker room. The guy did his job, and he did it well. Did he do it well? I would I say so. that anyone might note that. Yo, have you ever seen an Uber driver not high on gummies? He's high as fuck on yeah, that floor, just right. zipping around with that bag of food. I'm be surprised if that guy didn't have at least two thirds of his shit eaten by the time it was delivered. See, that's the thing. I want to follow up to this. Um, and yeah. So Look at him. He's right behind him <laughs> on the stripe. He should have swiped it NBA Jam style and just shot a three for giggles. He's on fire. Uh, look at the, what the fuck? <laughs> they don't know how he got in because he didn't have a ticket. Um, and apparently it was uh, somebody working for Pittsburgh venue for the Pittsburgh venues video board. Uh, and they uh, they ordered it, as also not knowing that he would do that. I have an idea. I'm going to go to the Super Bowl and root for the Chiefs because I hate the fucking Eagles. And carry a sack of you. <laughs> <laughs> carry a sack of food and just wander in there, going, "I'm Uber Eats. I, I guess you got to drop this food off and go watch the game for free." That's my plan now. It's not a bad idea. I'm I, think not, so. I think it'll work. Yeah. yeah. All right. Done and I done. I mean, do Super does Super Bowl even have security? Yes. I think it'll be no, no, no. <laughs> From what I've heard, you have to be there. Be there two and a half hours in advance for the screening shit. It is a nightmare uh, for people I've talked to. I, I look at the Super Bowl like. like I look at Mardi Gras, never in a million years. A lot of white trash, a lot of beads, a lot of anal beads, a lot of girls showing their tits. What? Uh, Crowds all it's Arizona this year. By the way, so. you can yeah. see tits any day of the week in Mar in uh, New Orleans. You don't need to go to Mardi Gras for well, they're, that. They're in Arizona this year. Uh, well, no, but I'm just saying oh, in general, uh, the crowd in general. factor, yeah. Uh, this, the, there's nothing appealing about the idea of going to a Super Bowl for me. Um, I assume this year, big Eagles fan here, yeah. this year it would be. Something There's nothing appealing for Bill because the Bears don't make the Super Bowl, duh. It's, uh, I don't know if we're necessarily actually a part of the NFL anymore. <laughs> um, but so there we go. That guy did that, and now he's, I guess, a legend. That wasn't the Sophie's Choice, though. I got a little ahead of myself. Right? Wait, Bill, before we move on. Yes. Okay, so somebody working the venue's video board wanted McDonald's. But don't they sell food? It's a college game. I'm right. assuming they have some concessions. And the fact that you are working this game, you probably get it for free. And honestly, Uber Eats is mad expensive. They they tack on all these fees, and then you got a tip. And, I mean, he walked all the way in. You really got to tip him for that. So, like... I, I don't think that the guy who ordered the food is of sound mind. Let me let me I, let me, let me I, feel I, let me feel this thing. one. This coming so Duran, I can tell you're not a person who goes to many sporting events. Have you eaten the food at a fucking giant stadium or Yankee Stadium? It stinks. I'd order yeah. in food too. I always but this I is, repeat, always eat you're before I go to a game. Wrong food. But this is gonna be cold McDonald's because yeah, Uber true. Eats is gonna always never yes. gets you hot. So this is cold McDonald's. None of this makes sense. No. There has Wait, to be more. This is this yeah, is cold. A good five guys is better than fucking eighteen dollar chicken five fingers guys, at yeah. Yankee Stadium. I promise you. Um, I have to say that was a hot take, Joe. You clearly the COVID has <laughs> not affected your mind just yet. Okay, so here is here here's the Sophie's choice. Um, Another sports one, but again, it has nothing to do with sports, Joe. Former Golden State Warriors star Matt Barnes, he actually has a great podcast, and it's very good on ESPN, appeared to sit in the face of a... Spit... Sit in the face? <laughs> spit in the face of a man later identified as, wait for it, his fiance's former husband. A uh, video showing the 42-year-old retired NBA player engaged in a verbal altercation with David Patterson Jr. before the start of an NFL game at Levi's Stadium in Santa Clara, California. Patterson, 37-year-old former defensive end, was previously married to Barnes' fiancé, fiance, model Anansa Sims. Those fucking names. Let's bring uh, her up. I want to I see what they're <laughs> spitting on each other for and fighting. Well, I guess, I, I did not know this. They were in a reality show together, uh, the former fiancé and Anansa, uh, called Beverly's Full House, where they shared... <laughs> three children, and I'm sure had all sorts of tomfoolery. Mm. Um, 
Barnes has since requested a temporary restraining order against the former Atlanta Falcons player who apparently shows up all over the place wherever Barnes is because he's dating his former boo. Um, Barnes claimed that Patterson was the aggressor of the incident and told police that he hunted me down and aggressively confronted me. Patterson shoved me, and I was forced to push him off of me. I did not want the altercation to physically escalate further, and out of frustration with him seeking me out and his unrepenting, repeated harassment, I spit in his direction in disgust. He spit in his general direction, you guys. Um... Barnes has accused Patterson of, of course, being jealous of his relationship. So now we can take a look at the tape here, but then I will ask you guys all is this, like a, is this like a Cholo gang spitting on the floor before they square off a la Sharks, Jets kind of thing? Yeah, but in that sense, it's the floor. In this case, it was the guy's person. And again, in this day, there it is. There it is. It's like that Seinfeld episode. Pitch move. Based on JFK. Oh, wait, he's wearing, a oh. Dal- he's wearing a Dallas hat. All is forgiven. Never mind. I agree but with the move. There's tons of other people around, which I find Very really odd. strange. Like, if it was just the two of you, then yeah, spit on him, push him, get him away from you. But you are surrounded by other people. It was like over someone. Uh, yeah. It's like over someone. Seriously. And, well, he's got good aim. Yeah. So who's, is, is the ex the dude right there on the left, or is it the one the Cowboys? Matt Barnes is the one that's currently seeing her. He's the spitter, and the right, spitty spit. is the ex that was on the reality show with her. Okay. But that doesn't make sense. So here's the thing. If you are if you won the battle, like, I'm banging that now. Like, why need to rub it in? This guy, though, and I will give Matt Barnes credit on this. Well, maybe not for the spitty, but we'll get into that. Um, I, I mean, again, this guy's been tailing him everywhere. Won't leave him oh, alone. He's and him. He's, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I think part Hang of it is that. Hang on, we got to remember some history here, Bill. Which is that Matt Barnes fought Derek Fisher, drove over four hours to fight Derek Fisher. Touché. So this isn't the first time Touché. he's sought a fight. Four hours. Derek That's Fisher. That's a long time to sit there and mull Derek that. Fisher It'll fucked be his angry wife. for four yeah. hours. Allegedly. To keep that level of anger heightened yeah. for four hours is a level only, you know, for narcissists and fucking maniacs. That's some yeah, Pat that's a crazy Dixon move. shit right there. That is some <laughs> Pat Dixon shit. Okay, so here's the Sophie's choice. This was a big debate. Debate if you can have a if TMZ even knows what a debate is <laughs> the, with the staff, would you rather? Uh-huh. And we can just go down the table, starting with the COVID kid over here. Would you rather get spit in the face or punched in the face? That was the question. I think it's a simple que- answer, but Oops. there are some media- mitigating factors here, particularly in this age of disease. Joe, what do you think? Would you rather get clocked or spit on? Um, I think spit on. Also, as an actor, I get spit on all the time, not in the way you think. Um, <laughs> speech, kind of and, speech and diction. <laughs> puh, puh. Yeah. People are spitting. Bill, you spit on me almost daily on, the, on this show, you know, because uh, of your tooth issues. Uh, <laughs> so I think, and also, you know, money maker. A punch yeah. could really destroy yeah. something here. So a spit, I would rather. But Joe, it might solve your speech impediment. Stop. What, COVID? She's got crooked Stop. asses. What's <laughs> Who is she, JR from fucking Monday Night Raw now? She's got a little we of got the- got an old slobber knocker here tonight, Kang. That's Bill Schultz's music. Uh, she's got a little of the Drew Barrymore asses in her. A little bit. Um, Not as much of an alcohol. I know my answer. Kev, what do you think? Split well, or hit? I need to know certain things. Who's throwing the punch? I mean, if it's, well, jo- yeah. if it's Bill Schultz throwing a punch, I can definitely understand. I can take a punch. Uh, the sp- when did this be? I didn't mean for this to turn into a bill bashing. <laughs> spitting, I need to know if this person is contaminated or not. Uh, I agree with Joanne mostly, though. I do not want this beautiful thing touched in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> but if I if I have to take a punch, I, you know, some, someone very wafy. If it's Timothy Chalamet trying to load up, I go, motherfucker, bring it on. Oh yeah, he's he's a bit of a waif. And then I'll um, spit on him, and, and, and he looks like a slapper with nails. Um, Max, I, I mean, first of all, if you're a germaphobe, the, per, the they're gonna say. I will be hit in the style of a Creed movie versus oh. getting spit on. But I mean, overall, I, th- so, even if it's a germ thing, I'd still, I think I like I'm not a, I'm a bit of a germaphobe. I think I'd still rather be spit on unless they're like really diseased. Unless yeah, and the TMZ, the logic, and particularly with a lot of the guys in the staff, which I kind of thought was interesting, is they found it was more disrespectful. Yeah, the spitting versus the mm. hitting. Like it's like I don't. In some ways, it's like it's more insulting to the man to his manhood. 
Well, do you I, think also that the reason he's stalking and being so unchill is because Matt Barnes had a way better basketball career than this guy had a football career? So it's like he I played oh, he like played that. like one professional year with like well, the Falcons, yes, yeah. and Barnes was well, over a decade in the NBA. Right. Without a doubt, and that surprised me that he got that reality show for that. You know, yeah. for his background, I, I didn't know. I mean, maybe she's famous. I've never heard of her. I don't know. But, um, yeah, that's. Pull her up. Let's see true. what they're fighting over. I <laughs> yeah, it's a good I question. I want to see are they fighting over Lon- a Salma Hayek now? now? Or a, a, a now the first name is going to be e- or a uh, narrow it down. type or the first raccoon. It's going to narrow it down. <laughs> True. The last name will not because her last name's Smith, but uh, it's Alonza Smith, I believe. Alonza. Oh, I'm sorry. A, a not a Nansa. A Nansa Sims. Sims. I'm the worst. Jesus. I think someone hit me. Someone hit me. What were your cat scores when you were taking them in elementary school, Bill? I couldn't even spell cat, so they let me not take the test. Um, but that's who they're fighting over. And, you know, if you want to type in her name and then also nude, we'll see what kind of pass she really has. A Mr. I'm, Skin, I'm not please. against it. Uh, yeah, you know they charge you. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, I mean, feet. I would get spit on. And it was a healthy debate in TMZ. A million times over, I don't even care if it's a toothless meth addict in the middle of Central Park. Spit, spit, spit. Anyone that would choose spit has never been hit before. Right. Is what I mean, if you like, it ain't like the movies, kids. If you want to know why I have te- teeth issues, it's because I should have gotten spit on. Um, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, anyone that chooses spit has never lived a life, as far as I'm concerned. I don't care how much of a germaphobe you are. But it went on and on and on, and it blew my mind. And most people were team uh, hit, rather than get hit. Yeah. And, again, they've Maniacs. never been attacked. They have never been assaulted. Yeah. <laughs> it takes forever to fix your, fix your fucking mug up and all of that. 